that's the sound of another satellite blasting into space to join close to 5,000 that are already flying above our heads. Exactly what they're all doing up there, well, that's for another day. But many are showing us what's going on with climate change. It's a hot topic, literally. Everybody wants to know how long is the heat wave going to be, how intense is it, is it where is it intense. This is Professor John Remedios, the director of the National Centre for Earth Observation. And if, if, if you live in a city, you go into London any day, you notice that change in temperature. So that urban density, the density of the houses, the density of the tower blocks, gives you an effect that exacerbates that heat stress. And if, I don't know about you, but I'd rather be in a green park in the cool. Well, it's identifying what is still cool and what's burning up and where that's happening, which is at the centre of his team's groundbreaking research. So what we're trying to do here from the National Centre for Earth Observation is produce very accurate representations of land surface temperature, effectively the temperature of your local street, your local park, outside it in agricultural fields, outside a city, and then get that data to people who can use it. And for innovation expert Mark Tabor, he's at Britain's National Mapping Agency Ordnance Survey, super accurate mapping brings this opportunity to life because if you get heat mapping the raw data from a satellite, it has no context. But if you actually combine it with Ordnance Survey mapping, which means you can identify what the different heat sources are, particularly in an urban environment, it can actually help out with urban planning. It can help out with understanding different roof types, roof materials, and what impact that has, has on heating. But you can only get that context when you combine it with geospatial data. So you might want to know how hot is it going to be today, well, actually, that varies across the town in which you live. All sorts of applications. But the key thing is getting really good data that people can trust to people who can use it very quickly. And here's where those in science are now advocates for change, urgent change. So we caught up with the lead spokesperson on climate at Ordnance Survey, Donna Lindsay, uh, during one of her outdoor research trips. For a project like this, Ordnance Survey is absolutely fundamental because, you know, the world actually looks to us to provide, you know, authoritative, trusted data. This is a precursor to what it's going to be like on a very consistent basis going forward. So we need to prepare. And actually these data sets that um, the Space Park actually helped deliver can help us with those problems. And here's Professor John Remedios again. There's a climate change committee in the UK which published a report on looking at heat waves in cities was one of the areas they said that the government needs to pay urgent attention to. Because if you look in the last five years, we've probably had four heat wave years out of five at least. And that means more than one heat wave in an individual year. Um, it's, it varies a bit with position within the UK, but certainly in England and as you go towards the big cities, particularly around Manchester and down to London, that increases year on year. Typically, Every 30 years or so, you could see a doubling, estimated doubling of deaths uh, from heat stress in those cities over the next, so double the next 30 years, double the 30 years after that. So it's a pretty significant effect. And so these sorts of data spe sets speak to that challenge around understanding heat waves and planning for the future so that we actually adopt measures which reduce the effect, if we can, and reduce the exposure to that heat effect. So we'll find out what can be revealed from space in a moment. But first, a bit more about the serious hardware that's up there. And that's with Dr Darren Ghent and first, Abigail Waring. There's thousands of satellites. So they can range from low Earth, low Earth orbits about 800 kilometres above the ground. These are flying at six or seven kilometres a second. Then we have geostationary satellites, which are a lot uh, further away from the Earth. And they all carry different sensors as well. We use a lot of um, infrared and microwave that measure a lot of different variables. It's taken a couple of decades probably to really get to the point where we can start to have confidence. There's no other way of looking at these heat variations uh, at the scales we're talking about, down to street level, really, probably about 100 metres. Meanwhile, Dr Mike Perry and his team are identifying the vital part green spaces are playing. You can see the impact as you move to more suburban regions where just that little bit of greenery in the back gardens, suddenly you see a decrease in the temperature. 
You can obviously see major parklands and they stand out, but what's really interesting to us here is that the parks don't just cool themselves down. You see almost a bleeding of the cooling effect away from the parks into the urban surroundings, showing the real importance of green space in cooling down an urban environment. For Professor Remedios, it's about the ability to record and reflect both the changes day to day and decade to decade. If you look at a city like Birmingham, Manchester, Leicester, anywhere really, if you're involved in looking at how cities work and how towns work on the long term, so what are the health impacts of the greenhouse gas effect, the climate change temperature rise, if you want to look at that, you need to know how it's varied historically and you need to get some idea of how it's going to vary in the future. So what we can help with is the history and the actual pattern of temperatures. So what's next? We'll hear Donna at Ornance Survey with the case for sustainability. But first, Dr Mike Perry again on the power of data that you know you can trust. And that's what we're working towards here, to come up with robust practices that are accurate, that we can roll out over the whole of the UK and have users be able to come to it and know what they're going to get, ability for them to interpret it with the OS information. And we can do that across the UK. That would be amazing. And here's Donna Lindsay at OS again. And we forget how important, you know, our green infrastructure is um, to help us with events like this. Um, so, you know, when you're talking about sort of potentially greening a, a city, so putting in more trees, more grasslands, etc., and actually putting in more blue infrastructure, so rivers, water, you know, fountains, that sort of stuff, you know, we can really, really help inform that and actually show by the combination of all these different information sources of actually what that impact actually means. I think the value is increasing all the time. We are in a country that has cities that are trying to look for areas where we can build housing, whether we can reuse brownfield sites, whether we're going into the green infrastructure around our cities, and actually understanding, well, if we cut into some of these green spaces, this is going to be the effect that you're going to have on your urban landscape. You're going to get increased temperatures, whereas reusing some of the already developed sites might not have that same impact. Now, that may be obvious to people, but we have to prove that to decision makers and planners and show that there are real impacts to these decisions are critical. Yes, being brilliant at number crunching isn't the only reason why the partnership between the Space Park and OS is important. I mean, what good is great data if it isn't seen? Well, there are a few ways in which you try to get data to people so that they can use it. You talk to your scientific colleagues, you publish papers, you might put a little bit of data on your website and some people will try and download it. But most people have never heard of you and most people don't really understand what it is they're getting. So what we wanted to do was uh, use a trusted intermediary who are already producing maps that people use through a framework that people are used to going to to get their data. Um, and so the Ordnance Survey was perfect. So it needs, they needed, really needed the technical experts from OS to think about how they're going to present that data. They needed our guys to think about are we really producing very good data scientific expertise to get these algorithms to work. So really working together to say, right, you know, can you do the algorithm? Yeah, I can do that. I can apply it to this street OS. What do you need? How are you going to present it? And some of the graphics and visualizations from OS were fantastic. So if you're walking down, down an area like this, you know, we should be able to tell you actually where it's hotter than it's not, you know, where actually the safer places to be, where you can go and cool down. By combining those space data sets with our own Ordnance Survey map data, we can actually help people make those cool decisions. So location from the Ordnance Survey, coupled with our understanding of location from satellite, together with accurate land surface temperature data from our satellite algorithms. And, that, and that's just on a personal level, you know, we can do that actually for um, infrastructure companies to say, well, actually, where do they need to design their infrastructure to cope with these heat events? Because we can tell them it's going to be hotter over here than it is over here. And so that belief in actually verifiable information that you provide together as one package is really critical. Thanks for listening. We hope the experts we've just heard from will in some way help you see a better place.